If uh, Cable is ready, we'd like to welcome him to our meeting and ask you to uh, join us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, please. Durante? Present. Folks is absent, excused. Rappaport? Present. Richards? Present. Sharp? Present. Spizak? Yes, here. Uh, Statchow? Present. And Hornbuckle? Present. Have a quorum? Approval of minutes from our December 1st, uh, 2021 meeting. So move. Support. <clears throat> Motion by uh, Commissioner Spizak, supported by uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Richards. Uh, roll call, please. Uh, roll call to approve the minutes from December 1st, 2021. Ronti? Yes. Rapport? Yes. Richards? Yes. Uh, Sharp? Yes. Spizak? Yes. Statchow? Okay. Uh, Hornbuckle? Yes. Minister approved? At this time of our uh, meeting, if there's anything that is not on our agenda you'd like to bring for us, this would be the time. I see nothing. We'll move into our first case. Our first case is a public hearing. It's case 2255A, uh, final phase uh, PUD development for attached condominiums at 33065 Ann Arbor Trail. Mr. A.U. Uh, thanks, Chair. Uh, the subject property here is located on the south side of Ann Arbor Trail um, and just east of Farmington Road uh, and also just east abutting the Nankin Mills um, of, of uh, Wayne County. The overall site comprises of about one acre and contains a single family dwelling. Uh, the property is zoned R2, single family residential. The petitioner proposes to construct a six unit. Uh, actually, I'm going to pause real quick. The um, petitioner is not in the audience, so I don't know if you would like to move this to the end of the agenda. That just popped up in my mind. We could hold this over to the end of the meeting. Is everybody in agreement of that? Yes. Yes. And we just hold it over to the end. Very good. We will move into our next case, which is case 2196F, proposed land division, uh, Ford Road and uh, southwest corner of Ford Road and Newburgh. Very you. Okay, thank you. Uh, the subject property here is located at the southwest corner of Newburgh and Ford Road, uh, and is currently zoned PUD. It's our planned unit development designation. <clears throat> Uh, the property is currently vacant <clears throat> on uh, April 20th of 2021. You may remember that the city council approved a site plan for a Tommy's car wash <clears throat> on the east half of the site, um, just on your right hand side of that red line. <clears throat> uh, the car wash is currently in the permitting stage uh, and construction is expected to commence uh, this spring. I believe uh, final per building permits were issued a week or two ago. Uh, the city received site plans uh, for a proposed uh, Dairy Queen drive through restaurant on the western half of this property. And the petitioner uh, tonight is requesting to split uh, the property to accommodate the new Dairy Queen. If approved, the existing Dairy Queen uh, at 36520 Ford Road next to the UPS store in the Kroger Shopping Center uh, will be relocated to this location. Uh, which will provide a larger building uh, and drive-through area. Uh, so again, the petitioner proposes to split the parcel. Uh, both parcels, uh, resulting par parcels will continue to comply with the minimum zoning requirements. Uh, there is an access easement uh, on parcel two, the Tommy's car wash being provided uh, to parcel one where the drive-through uh, restaurant will be located for it to um, obtain access that I'll describe in more detail uh, in the next item. This is what the survey looks like. 
Parcel B again is the car wash and parcel A is the Dairy Queen. Be happy to answer any questions. Is the petitioner in the audience? Yes, I am. Why? Would you come forward and introduce yourself, sir? Okay. Thank you. Hi, my name is uh, Aaron Brown, and I represent uh, a development group that is uh, building the car wash on the corner of Ford and Newburgh, as shown in parcel A. Okay, very good. Uh, are there any questions from anybody in the audience? We'll, uh, <laughs> apparently not. we'll open it up to the commission. Anything you wish to add to what Mr. Abe said? No, I think Mo did a great job explaining the situation here. So Very good. I'm happy to answer any questions. So. Very good. We'll open it up to the commission. Motion. Yeah, Commissioner uh, Stackhouse. Okay. Uh, I'd like to make a motion uh, to move forward uh, this petition, and it's case number two. 196F proposed land division parcel 04905098130 southwest corner of Ford Road and Newburgh Aaron Brown Support. Support. and this uh, will uh, go to uh, city council with a recommendation for approval okay. thank you very much motion by commissioner Stackhow uh, supported Support. by Commissioner uh, Hornbuckle, roll call, please. Uh, roll call. Oh, two, two. Uh, case number 2196F, Durante? Yes. Uh, Rappaport? Yes. Richards? Yes. Sharp? Yes. Exactly. Yes. Stachow? Yes. And Hornbuckle? Yes. Motion is approved. Our next case is tied with this one. It's a uh, case uh, 2196G, which is site plan approval for the proposed Dairy Queen. Mr. A. U. anything you wish to add in addition? Uh, thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> so similar to the previous case, uh, this subject property is also located at the southwest corner of Ford Road in Newburgh and is uh, still zoned PUD. Um, it's outlined in red. This is the resulting parcel for the parcel that you just uh, recommended approval to split. Uh, again, the applicant is requesting site plan approval for this case to construct the Dairy Queen drive through restaurant. This is what the site plan looks like on that western portion. Um, again, Tommy's Car Wash on the eastern portion. That's kind of cut off there. You can kind of see some of the stacking and the uh, dumpster related to the car wash activity. I'll just lay out some quick uh, design facts from the site plan. Uh, it's about a 2,900 square foot uh, building uh, accommodated or, uh, along with a drive-through. Um, site access is, is provided by a full service driveway there at Ford Road uh, up on the north side of the site. Uh, this is approximately the center point maybe between the Tommy's Car Wash and the Dairy Queen. Access is located on the Tommy's Car Wash uh, parcel, but they are again being provided an access easement through an agreement. Um, parking uh, is provided in compliance with the zoning ordinance. 21 are required, 40 are being provided in addition to bicycle parking and a loading zone. Uh, there are eight stacking spaces that are required, and the site plan is providing for 14 with a slip lane um, if anyone wants to get out um, for any sort of reason or emergency. Uh, the building is, uh, building materials are proposed as uh, brick and stone primarily. There's some accent material um, being proposed as, as metal and some other um, accent materials, which is less than 10%. Uh, colored renderings around the screen. Um, site contains screening and landscaping along the street sides uh, of Ford Road uh, with a 20-foot wide landscaping buffer along Ford Road. Um, there's also uh, landscaping throughout the site in addition to the parking lot areas, which is uh, which exceeds the uh, zoning ordinance requirements. There's a decorative fence consistent with DDA standards that is proposed along the Ford Road um, property line. Um, that's sort of it for uh, the site plan details that I wanted to mention on the record. Site lighting is, is being provided in accordance with the zoning 
ordinance. And finally, the hours of operations are Monday through Sunday, 10 a.m. through 11 p.m. And the administration is recommending approval. Thank you. Thank you. Petitioner, like to come back forward, please. <laughs> Anything you'd wish to add? Uh, thank you for reviewing our plan, and uh, hopefully with approval, we'll uh, have a new store located in Westland. All right. Anyone in the audience wish to speak on this? We'll open it up to commission. Uh, yes. Um, she had a question. I have a question. No, she has a question. Yeah. Question. Yes. Yeah. Uh, through the uh, chair to the petitioner. Uh, yeah, I had a couple of questions here in regard to uh, the uh, uh, shrubs and trees that you're planning okay. on putting in. Sounds really nice. Very nice landscaping. My only concern was that the driveway going out to Ford Road, okay. you have the sidewalk, and then uh, according to your plan, it appears that you have like a Rosa Sharon bush that's going to be there. Okay. And those usually grow away uh, about eight to 12 feet, and sometimes they have a spread of six to 10 feet. Okay. And I was just a little concerned about it possibly being a block, blocking that area okay. because you're going to have pedestrians. And uh, I was happy to see that uh, you're going to have a bike rack there, yes. which is, you know, which is nice. But however, then, if you're going to have bikers coming in, you're going to have maybe some difficulties there. You might want to switch your... Um, sure. your shrubbery around okay. so that maybe you have like a, a something smaller shorter. burning bush or okay. something of that nature. Sure. I thank you. Would for you that. be willing to do that? Yes. Okay. Miniature burning bush. <laughs> <laughs> or well trimmed. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. And there one was other? just Go one ahead. other thing as sure. well. I had another question for you. Thank you. Uh, also too, uh, are you thinking of possibly having like a watch for a pedestrian sign out we, there? We will definitely have everything marked thoroughly for pedestrians. And I'm sorry, I we, couldn't hear you. I, I'm sorry, we will have everything thoroughly marked for pedestrian and uh, right of way. <clears throat> yeah, that's my only concern is that Ford Road area that seems as though, uh, because there is a lot of traffic going through there, and I know that you're going to have a lot of customers, so, <laughs> yeah, right. So uh, I'd like to uh, make sure that, the, you know, we, we take that safety into concern. Certainly. You know. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Questions? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Dranny. Um, is this going to replace the Dairy Queen that's uh, currently on? Yes, we're the current ownership of the Dairy Queen and uh, the Kroger Shopping Center. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Motions in order? Yes, Commissioner uh, I have, Rappaport. Uh, I, I'm prepared to make a motion if there are no more uh, comments, but I did want to clarify something before I made the motion. <coughs> Uh, this goes to my colleague, uh, Ms. Stasha. Yes. The, uh, did you want the, uh, was the commentary about the bush, uh, the, the shrubbery, <coughs> was that a, uh, a concern that you wanted to air, or is that a, is that a requirement that you want? That you no, want? I would like to have that as an inquire, uh, requirement because I think it's important enough for the safety of the pedestrians uh, going in and out of very that well, area. I'll, I'll include it in my motion. If okay. Proceed. Thank you. Yes. Thank Please. you very much. This time I'd like to uh, move to uh, since a, uh, a special case. So I'd like to uh, move to send case number 2196G site plan approval for proposed Dairy Queen drive through restaurant at 37601 Ford Road to City Council with a recommendation for approval, subject to the, uh, the aforementioned uh, change to, uh, to uh, Landscape. shrubbery landscaping, yeah. and uh, otherwise as the department shall require a request. Support. A motion by uh, Commissioner Rappaport. Uh, Commissioner Rappaport, uh, supported by Commissioner Duraney. Roll call, please. Okay. Uh, roll call vote to approve uh, case number 2196G with the conditions mentioned on the record related to the landscaping plan. Durante? Yes. Rappaport? 
Yes. Richards. Yes. Clark. Yes. Spizak. Yes. Statchow. Yes. Hornbuckle. Yes. Motion carries. Sir, thank you for uh, staying with our city and good luck with your your larger building. I'm sure it'll do well. Thank you. Uh, we'll move into our next case, which is case 2256, which is a proposed land division, a combination on uh, <clears throat> North Van Amber Trail on the west side of Inkster. Mr. Ayu. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, the subject properties here are located at the northwest corner of Inkster and Ann Arbor Trail, uh, both zone CB3. Uh, parcel A is currently vacant. Uh, that is the rectangular portion uh, over here. I'm going to outline it using my uh, mouse. Uh, this is parcel A. And then parcel B uh, is the existing uh, site of the Ramallah Club. That's the larger uh, parcel over here, approximately this area over here. Uh, the petitioner is requesting to split off the red uh, outlined area of parcel A and donate it to parcel B. Parcel A uh, is the location of a proposed uh, conditional marijuana retail business uh, north of Ford Road that will come to you for approval at a later date uh, we are not discussing that tonight. Uh, the split is required to allow parcel A uh, to uh, meet the distance separation <coughs> requirements uh, for the marijuana business uh, facility. Uh, the resulting parcel, once it is combined with the Ramallah Club, parcel B uh, will comply with the minimum zoning requirements and will have sufficient access to comply with the Land Division Act. Mm -hmm. Uh, the administration is recommending approval of this uh, proposed land division. Thank you. Thank you, sir. There's a petition here, sir. Yes. Yes. You kindly introduce yourself. Joey Kajbu here, appearing on behalf of Mr. Yatuma and Thanos LLC. Anything you'd wish to add? Uh, I think uh, Mr. Ayub did a very good job of explaining everything we're seeking to achieve. Um, if this is granted, we're just looking forward to a nice development on this property on that vacant parcel that very I think good. would be an asset to the community. Any questions from anyone in the audience? We will open it up to our commission. Any questions from the commission? Just uh, very Rappaport. quickly. Uh, Mr. Ayub, the, uh, so that we can, we can divide and combine, but we cannot divide but not combine because it would create a, uh, a landlocked parcel? Yes, correct. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. I just want to make a motion. Oh. <clears throat> no questions? Yes, Commissioner uh, Richards. I move to close out case number 2256, proposed land division and combination parcels 0019900060000 and 0019900620001, west side of Inkster Road, north of Ann Arbor Trail, and send to City Council for recommendation of approval. Support. Uh, motion by uh, Commissioner Richard, supported by Commissioner Spizak. Roll call, please. Uh, roll call vote to approve case number 2256. Uh, Durante. Yes. Rappaport. <clears throat> yes. Richards. Yes. Sharp. Yes. Spizak. Yes. Stachow. Yes. And Hornbuckle. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening. Yes. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. <laughs> We'll uh, move into our next case, which is a public hearing. It's case 1879C, special land use uh, and site plan approval for the proposed uh, marijuana collated uh, facility uh, on Cherry Hill, west of Newburgh. Mr. Ayu. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Give me one second. Okay. This is a bit lengthier than the other ones. Uh, the subject property here is um, zoned I-2, general industrial. The applicant is seeking site plan approval for uh, a approximately 6,000 square foot marijuana retail store uh, and a approximately 22 or 21 
1,000 uh, square foot marijuana cultivation center on a currently undeveloped uh, five and a half approximately acre parcel on Cherry Hill Road, uh, just west of Newburgh. Uh, the proposal also indicates uh, an existing two-story house on the third uh, parcel that they obtain ownership of over here uh, indicates the demolition of that uh, dilapidated two-story house. Uh, so some um, site plan related notes. Uh, the site is accessed by a one full service drive at Cherry Hill. Uh, the site complies with the parking requirements of uh, the marijuana business ordinance. I'd be happy to go into detail uh, in that. Uh, in total, uh, there are 104 uh, parking spaces uh, that are proposed. Uh, proposed landscaping mm -hmm. for parking areas in addition to the screening of Cherry Hill and other open space areas uh, is compliant in accordance with the landscaping requirements of the zoning ordinance. Uh, there is a landscaping buffer uh, provided along Cherry Hill that includes trees, shrubs, and a sodded lawn. Uh, the proposal includes a stormwater uh, detention area. Um, stormwater management must be approved by Wayne County. Uh, my understanding is that they've had preliminary discussions and that Wayne County is uh, is okay with the, their proposal as it is presented today. Uh, exterior lighting uh, will include a combination of pole mounted LEDs throughout the parking lot, wall scone lights and bollard lights throughout the site. Uh, site lighting uh, will not exceed one foot candle maximum at the property line. There is a photometric study in your backup. Uh, the proposed building materials uh, are um, high quality building materials compliant with the zoning ordinance. Um, they include stone, masonry block, wood, uh, wood looking composite boards and metal siding. Uh, that's a rendering up on the screen of the retail facility. Again, about 6,000 square feet. And this is the cultivation center, uh, about 21,000 square feet. Uh, the buildings both comply with the bulk requirements of the zoning ordinance. That includes height, uh, lot coverage, setbacks, uh, side, rear, and front. Uh, the administration and planning department are recommending uh, um, approval of this proposed site plan and special land use with a variety of conditions that are uh, in your backup. Uh, the same that exist uh, or, or that were previously mentioned uh, for other marijuana businesses at previous meetings, uh, and these will, will all stay consistent and be presented to you for any future marijuana business facilities. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Petitioner in the audience. Yes. yes. <clears throat> Good evening, ladies yourself. and gentlemen, Chairman. My name is Kurt Molino with Kinship Cannabis. Uh, the, the license holder is Carpel. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Very good. Are you familiar with the six conditions on here? Uh, no. Okay. Mr. Ayew, did you want to read those? Yes, I okay. will gladly read them on the record. Very good. Okay. There's six total conditions. Number one, uh, the facility must employ a facility-wide odor control plan designed for marijuana cultivation for proper ventilation, odor control, and noxious gas mitigation. Uh, the odor control plan must be approved by the building official uh, during the time of permitting. Uh, a, a security plan that complies with the marijuana business ordinance must be adhered to and submitted to the planning department and police department, which you've already done. Uh, the marijuana business license C shall enter into a legally binding community benefits agreement. Uh, I, I know you are aware of that. We, I haven't sent you the CBA. We'll do so in the next couple days, and Perfect. we can go back and forth on that. Thank you. Um, number four, continued compliance with all applicable local and state laws, including but not limited to the Westland Marijuana Business Ordinance. Any violation of any state marijuana law shall be deemed uh, a violation of the Westland Uniform Marijuana Business Ordinance. Number five, we have some uh, signage regulations in our marijuana business ordinance uh, that must be complied with. 
Uh, and finally, number six, hours of operation to the public uh, shall be limited between the hours of 10 a.m. and 9 p.m. Uh, staff and other uh, agents and representatives can be inside, uh, but it is close to the public between uh, or after those hours. Perfect. No problem at all. Okay. You agree with all those, sir? Yes, sir. All right. This is a public hearing. We'll open it up to uh, see if anyone wants to speak, and then we'll bring you right back up. Thank you. Anyone on my right wish to speak on this? Anyone? Anyone on my left? We'll open it up to the commission. Okay. Commissioners? Commissioner Rappaport. Uh, if nobody else wants to, I'm, I'll take the motion because of the wrath uh, of it. All right. <laughs> Any uh, questions? But uh, other you. than that, I just wanted to go out to make the comment. The, uh, the, uh, the proposals, these mock-ups that we have. The yeah, the renderings. Uh, yeah. It looks like a very, uh, very well uh, planned out. Uh, very attractive uh, business uh, business proposal. Thank uh, you. I like that. Uh, I like the treatment, and I want to go on record here. I like the treatment that Westland is giving, the opportunities that they're giving to uh, to our marijuana provisioners, yes. <clears throat> treating them uh, very much like uh, like business the business opportunities it really is we call it cannabis more than cannabis to be mm -hmm. honest with you and we wanted it to be more of a wellness feel anyway i didn't want it to look like a marijuana you know a store that you might see in different cities that doesn't you know we wanted i'm a developer myself for 35 years so my brothers and i that's why kinship got involved in this because we had another brother that passed away of lou gehrig's disease and the university of michigan put him on a medical marijuana pill that's when we got interested in getting involved in the industry because we knew we could help people so along with our talents as far as guido architects though this man right here is the guy that drew these art these rent renderings for him i give him all the credit with our ideas along with like apple stores and things like we really wanted to be pro professional and classy so that anybody felt comfortable to come in and shop we actually have a cannabis uh consultant woman that works with uh cancer patients, glaucoma, P PTSD patients, and other things. So we'll have a, a section in the building for that too. So this is more than uh, what the stigma might be in the world. This is a real industry. We look forward to building here in, in Westland. It's been great to work with everyone. Mo's done a fantastic job to help us through the process, and I can't be, uh, I can't thank you enough for, for all the help. The council too. Very good. The various plan to get you talking worked. <laughs> it did. And I'm shy in public. <laughs> Motions in order, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. At this time, I'd like to move to close the public hearing. We have the normal rules. It said case number 189, sorry, 79C, special land use and site plan approval for proposed marijuana co-located facility at 37501 and 37505 Cherry Hill, West Newburgh and South Side of Cherry Hill to the City Council with a recommendation for approval subject to the following uh, long form or short form? Short you go six. Short form? <laughs> sure. Uh, <laughs> contingent upon the uh, departmental requirements and recommendations and subject to the six aforementioned conditions that, uh, that the petitioner has agreed to on the record. Absolutely. Support. Uh, motion by Commissioner uh, Rappaport, supported by Commissioner Spizak. Roll call, please. Roll call vote to recommend approval of case number 1879C, Durante. Yes. Rappaport. Yes. Richards. Yes. Sharp. Yes. Spizak. Yes. Stachow. Yes. Cornbuckle. Yes. Motion carries. Congratulations, sir. Thank you Good very much. Good luck as you go to City Council. Uh, and I have to uh, agree with uh, Commissioner Rappaport. The, the showings and all that are first class. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Have a good evening. Thank you. You also. You Thank you. Uh, we'll move into our next case, uh, which is case 1315A, site plan approval for uh, proposed uh, Conversion of a vacant church into multiple family uh, residential 31463 Ann Arbor Trail. Mr. Ayu. Thank you, Chairman. Subject property here is located on the southwest corner of Ann Arbor Trail and Merriman. 
uh, and is about six acres in area. Uh, the property is currently zoned GAR, that's our Garden Apartment Residential District. Uh, it is currently developed with a vacant church. The petitioners are proposing a two-phase uh, project. Phase one is to repurpose the existing church uh, building and turn it into 30 apartment units, uh, which includes the construction of a second floor. Uh, phase two proposes construction of six buildings around the perimeter of the property that contain a total of 34 condo units. Uh, the applicant is requesting site plan approval for both phases uh, of this project. Uh, the site plan's up on the screen. Um, church in the center and, and the perimeter condos that I just mentioned uh, on there as well. Uh, some design elements. Uh, the proposed exterior, exterior building material, materials are brick on the first floor and EFIS and siding on the second floors. Uh, the site will utilize the existing uh, driveway at Ann Arbor Trail uh, on the northwest side of the site. Um, it's existing there, as you can see. Uh, these curb cuts will be closed off here at Merriman. Uh, green space uh, planted in this area over here. Uh, the proposal complies with the require parking requirements of the zoning ordinance. Uh, the petitioner proposes street side landscaping along Ann Arbor Trail um, and along the east side of the site where the property line jogs uh, and abuts Merriman Road. Uh, all landscaping proposed throughout the site, uh, in including the open space areas, complies with the zoning ordinance. Uh, this includes uh, uh, landscaping within the interior of the parking lot. There's two dumpster enclosures located on opposite ends of the site. Uh, I believe one tucked back here and one tucked back here. Uh, these are built uh, using Trex panels. Site lighting is also provided in accordance with the um, standards of the zoning ordinance, not to exceed one foot candle at the property lines. Um, there is a stormwater uh, management system that has to be approved by Wayne County uh, that is proposed through these uh, detention basins uh, that are around the perimeter here uh, in the rear and also here in the front along Ann Arbor Trail. Uh, the bulk requirements are all complied with. This uh, includes um, minimum lot area depth, uh, all of the setbacks, including front, side, rear. Uh, lot coverage um, is proposed at 20.6%. Uh, the proposed height complies with the maximums of the zoning ordinance. Um, and so does the minimum dwelling area, um, which will be in the range of 1,200 to approximately 1,600. We have some colored renderings of the elevation, uh, brick on the bottom, uh, and some EFIS and uh, siding material, as I mentioned earlier on the top. I'd be happy to answer any questions. The administration is recommending approval. And petitioners in the audience, would you like to come forward and introduce yourself? How are you, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you for having us here, taking the time to look at our plans. Um, Anything you wish to my add? My name is Bill Chaban. This I'm Fetty Salome. Very good. Anything you wish to add? I'm sorry? Anything you wish to add to? No. Thank you, Mo. Very good. Are there any comments from anybody in the audience? Yes. Oh, yes. Just a minute. Hold on just a minute. Are there any comments from anybody in the audience? All right. We'll open up to commission. Yes. <clears throat> Commissioner Durani. Um, <clears throat> I would like to address Mr. Ayub. Can you go back to that uh, <clears throat> rendering? <clears throat> that one. Where did you say the dumpsters we're going to be located at let me verify uh, okay there is one here where see my cursor okay there's one that right there yep and then the other one is over here okay now 
To me, that doesn't make sense. To have the dumpsters both at the same end of this complex, when in the wintertime, what are these people way up at the top going to do? Have to walk all the way down to here. Wouldn't it be more logical to have one at this corner and one up at this other corner up here? Where the three trees are? So the applicant wanted to place uh, one of the dumpster enclosures. I'm not sure if it was in that exact space or on the opposite side on the, on the north side, but mm -hmm. uh, dumpsters are only permitted um, in, in these areas. If, if you wanted to um, require the uh, dumpster, uh, a dumpster in this area, uh, the petitioner would have to make a visit to the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, for that. Well, it would make more sense to have a dumpster in that corner and this far corner than both on the same side. It just makes more sense to have kitty corner, especially in the wintertime. So we, we discussed uh, a variety of options relating to uh, dumpster enclosures and also just trash collection in general. Um, and especially since this is a two-phased project with the condos happening at a later date, um, there was going to be um, kind of a trial run, and if w they did need to order uh, trash cans for individual condo units uh, and have that privatized or seek a variance for potentially uh, installing a dumpster at this location, then they would. Um, but as it stands today, requiring a dumpster enclosure there would require approval from the zoning board. Okay. Do we have your approval? I'm kidding. <laughs> I was kidding. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Are there any other comments? Mm -hmm. Any questions? Yes. How many? Commissioner, uh, Ruby? If Commissioner Ruby or Commissioner? I don't have a question. Do you have a question? I just had a question. Is only one uh, entryway in and out? There's only one. Uh, yes, one full service drive over here. Okay. <clears throat> Commissioner Richard. I didn't have a question. I was going to make a motion. No. I can make a motion. Uh, how, many, uh, how many units total are we talking about here? Um, 64. 64 units? Yes. Richard. Up and down, is that right? 30, uh, 30 apartment That's units four, four, in the uh, existing church. Uh, and then phase two uh, are the condos around the perimeter, and those are 34 <laughs> units. Well, if there's going to be that many, I, I really think that they should be at opposite ends. Mm. I don't know. That's my opinion. Any other questions? Commissioner uh, Richards. Yes, I move to close out case number 1315A, proposed site plan approval, conversion of a vacant church into a condominium, condominium development at 31463 Ann Arbor Trail, southwest corner of Ann Arbor Trail in Merriman, and sent to City Council for recommendation of approval. Your support? <clears throat> uh, support, but I want clarification. Is that with or without the, uh, the recommendation of uh, Councilman, uh, Councilman uh, Draining? I'm sorry? Uh, on the additional uh, on location? The additional rec on the additional uh, provision of the, uh, dumpster. of the dumpster. Is that part of your motion? Yes. That's part of the motion. Okay. Thank you. Uh, approval subject to the, uh, the recommendation of uh, Councilman uh, Durante. Uh, questions for you, gentlemen? No, sir. No. Thank okay. you for your time. And, uh, okay. Oh, we didn't approve it yet. Roll call. <laughs> Roll call. I'm sorry, was there a uh, support made, please? Yes. Uh, mine yes. was a support, a support. As, long as, it's got the, uh, as long as it's got the recommendation. Thank you. OK. Uh, roll call to recommend approval of case number 1315A. Uh, Durante. Yes. Rappaport. Yes. Richards. Yes. Sharp. Yes. Spizak. 
Yes. Statch out. Yes. Hornbuckle. Yes. I should have said that that includes the condition to add the dumpster in the north uh, east corner of the site. Thank you. Okay, thank gentlemen. You. Thank you guys very much. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Good luck when you go to city thank council. You. Thank you. Thank you for your development. <clears throat> Move into our next case, which is case 1933A, proposed land division. Uh, <clears throat> west of uh, Newburgh on the north side of Cherry Hill. Mr. Ayew. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairman. Uh, the subject properties here are zoned I-1 light industrial and are currently <clears throat> vacant. The petitioner is seeking approval to combine both properties and split the result, resulting parcel into two parcels. So we're taking these two, combining them, and then performing a split in approximately this imaginary line here with a resulting parcel of this, and then a resulting parcel of this, uh, which is indicated over here. Uh, this is to accommodate uh, one of the marijuana co-located facilities uh, that we will discuss site plan and special land use approval hopefully at a later time. Uh, the petitioner proposes to combine uh, these parcels uh, again to split. Proposed parcel A, um, that is the south parcel, the parcel for the potential um, or proposed co-located facility, that's about five acres. And then proposed parcel B that is staying undeveloped is approximately 6.6 .6 acres. Uh, there's a few other things going on here. Um, the property owner is providing a 33-foot right-of-way dedication uh, for Florence Avenue up here uh, to make it potentially buildable as a, a compliant roadway in the future. Uh, they are also providing a 60-foot right-of-way dedication uh, to clean up uh, Cherry Hill. Right now, the property line comes out to the center line of the road, uh, and that will approximately shift it back uh, just north of where uh, an, a sidewalk should go. Uh, and that will be dedicated to the county. There is also a 33-foot wide easement being provided uh, along the entire depth or length of the property in this area over here, uh, there is a county drain uh, in that area, and that easement will be uh, to provide access uh, for that. Um, the administration is recommending approval, uh, and that's all I have on that. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Is the petitioner here? Yes. Would you like to come forward, sir? Introduce yourself. Good evening, Samir Mahashani on behalf of the Cherry Hill Real Estate Group. Uh, anything you wish to add? Anything you wish to add? No, not at all. Okay. We're going to see if anybody in the audience wish to speak on this. No, nope. we will open it up to commission for questions and motions. Any questions? Commissioner Dillian. I, I just had a question. Uh, <clears throat> the purpose of this is for future development of the marijuana business. What's the rule with two kind of similar entities in the same area? Yes, good question. There are um, a variety of rules, um, and none of them are triggered by co-located facilities. Co-located facilities can go across the street from each other. The retail businesses that are standalone retail cannot be, I think, within a 1,000 feet of each other. Mm. So no retail place is going to this, no plans for a retail spot in this one? No standalone retail, yeah. This is, this is pr potentially going to be a co-located facility, which includes processing, cultivation, and retail. So it can have a co-located facility, but it cannot be a standalone uh, provisioning center that is 1,000 feet from another provisioning center. And, and one uh, other question. Uh, what about the distance between um, residential? Isn't this kind of close to residential as well? Um, it, it, I don't know what the exact distance is. Um, I think it's, I, yeah, I, I don't know what the exact distance is. But um, for co-located facilities, there is no separation distance from residential. Mm -hmm. For standalone retail facilities, the city council mm -hmm. um, requires it be 250 feet away. 
from residential. That's only for the standalone retailers. Any other questions? Yes, Commissioner Rappaport. Uh, mm -hmm. Just to clarify, we mm -hmm. we are exclusively considering the uh, mm -hmm. the land division and uh, the land division here and the and the uh, mm -hmm. and the uh, uh, sorry and the re uh, and the reassociation of uh, mm -hmm. parcel one and parcel two, creating a parcel A and parcel B. We're not really concerned about what it will eventually be used for at this point, is that correct? We are, we are only reviewing the uh, proposed land division tonight, yes. Okay, and uh, my normal concern is with parcel B. Uh, parcel B looks almost to be landlocked. Is it going to be uh, provided access through gravel? Mm -hmm. uh, so, yes, we discussed this with the applicant for uh, a mm -hmm. very lengthy amount of time. Um, that is a reason why the uh, property owner is dedicating 33 feet uh, to be part of the Florence right-of-way uh, in the future for possible or potential development of Parcel B there will be sufficient width uh, to extend Florence uh, to be a compliant roadway uh, to provide access to Parcel B. Um, my guess is, and we've had pre preliminary discussions, if that was to happen, uh, it would be through a bruisey drive and not through Newburgh Road. It would not cut through the residential uh, area. It would come from the industrial and kind of stop about halfway through the frontage of the property, uh, and the rest would be maintained as um, green space or forested area. Um, so approximately over here is where it would stop. Um, we would um, require it to be um, paved, uh, a hard surface area at the expense of the developer at the time. Okay, and uh, one last question. This one's going to be directed towards the uh, municipal attorney that we just happen to have here today. Uh, what uh, the administration is suggesting uh, is, would that be sufficient under the, uh, under the law? I'm asking I always like an easy opinion. one, uh, yes. <laughs> it would be sufficient. Thank you very much, then I have no objections. Motion's in order. Oh, right. at, it. All right. uh, at this time, I'd like to move to send case number 1933A, proposed land division, uh, parcels 052-990024 and 052-990031-000 to City Council with a uh, recommendation for approval. Is there support? Clark. A motion by Commissioner Rappaport, uh, supported by Commissioner Stackow. I'll Roll support call, it. <clears throat> Sorry, that was Stackow who supported? That is correct. Thank you. Okay. Uh, roll call vote to uh, recommend approval of case number 1933A. Uh, Durante? Yes. Rappaport? Yes. Richards? Yes. Sharp? Yes. Spizak? Yes. Stachow? Yes. Hornbuckle? Yes. Thank you. Curious. Thank you very much. Good luck, gentlemen. We need to go to city council there. Good luck, sir. Thank you. Uh, I don't believe our other petitioners showed. Uh, he, he is here, yes. Oh, is he? Yes, yes gentlemen. All right, well, then we'll go back to uh, the original uh, <coughs> case, which is uh, case 2255A. <coughs> Final uh, phase uh, PUD development uh, attached condos 33065 Ann Arbor Trail. Mr. Ayub. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, the subject site here is located on the south side of Ann Arbor Trail and east of Farmington. Uh, the overall site comprises of about one acre and contains a single family dwelling. Uh, the, proposed, the property is zoned R2, single family residential. The petitioner proposes to construct a six unit two building attached condominium development. If approved, the existing dwelling will be demolished to accommodate mm -hmm. the development. 
uh, on December 21st, 2021. Um, the City Council, well, prior to that, the Planning Commission recommended approval to the City Council, and the City Council approved the preliminary phase PUD plan uh, and rezoning the property to PUD. Uh, the condominium final uh, phase PUD plan is is not m very different from the one you appro recommended approval of then. Uh, it still contains uh, one ingress uh, only drive and one egress only drive uh, through an, a one-way internal access road, uh, which will connect those two driveways. Um, there's two different unit types that are proposed. One is a two-bedroom. Uh, the other a three bedroom um, ranging in square footage from 1266 to 1550 square feet. Uh, these are ranch style units, approximately 20 feet in height. Uh, each unit will include a single um, driveway uh, and uh, plus a one car garage. Uh, the development, the development of the site will also include uh, the installation of landscaping along uh, with trees at the Ann Arbor Trail frontage. I don't believe this was part of the preliminary uh, plans. Uh, the petitioner also proposes stormwater bioretention pond at the southwest side of the site. Um, what else? There are some uh, site design standards. I'll just. Uh, briefly discuss some of them. The building area totals up to about 10,700 square feet. Uh, that's with both of the buildings combined. Um, I have some elevation drawings. These are the floor plans. And these are the elevation drawings. Uh, the administration is recommending approval and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, sir. Petitioner, would like to come forward and introduce yourself. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, Reno Suave with Infinity Homes, uh, here to answer any questions that the commission may have. Okay, anything that you wish to add to this? No, I think if you guys have any questions on the site plan or anything that you know, comes up, right. I think there's a couple of residents that's happy to happy This to is a public so. hearing. Ladies, would you like to speak on this? <laughs> yeah, you're the ladies. I do have a question. Can I see you? You want me up here again? Yeah. Yes, that we can, everybody can hear you. I know he had talked before about getting together with us about the junk trees that are along the east <coughs> border. I don't know if they're on our property or his. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's not any part of the site issue or what you're doing today. But how do we make sure he talks to us? Right. And then the other question I have, <coughs> and, and Eleanor brought this up, that he would have the answer to. Because it's the same builder as the complex that's on Farmington Road, north of Ann Arbor Trail, why are they called luxury apartments instead of like condos? Your sign that's, your builder's sign that's out there. Thank you, so those are rentals on Farmington Road and these are sales. As of right now, they are eventually gonna be convertible, yeah. So that's why they're called apartments and the other ones are condos, sort of. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Those are their rentals. Pardon? Their condos are their rentals. Which Sir, one? would you like to come back up and explain that to the board here? Which ones are they? Well, the ones they're referring to uh, across the street, Kitty Corner, is those are going to be, those are very similar style units. Those are going to be for lease. And are those one and two bedrooms also? Excuse me? One and two bedrooms? There are two and three bedrooms. Two and three bedrooms? Yeah, and the, the, the... And one car garages? Correct, one car garage, and then you have obviously single car driveways, so. Okay. What, where does the big hill go? Does that go away? The big hill? Yeah. Well, that's for everybody to go skiing next winter, so. Pardon? That's for everybody to use a ski slope next winter, so. <laughs> it's gonna be removed, sir. I was just making a joke, sorry. Bad, bad humor, so. <laughs> Excuse me, I have a question. What's going to happen to it? We're going to remove once the weather permits. There's about maybe 5,000 yards. You're of building all the way out, all the way out to Ann Arbor Trail. Are you referring to the Park Road project or this one? Yeah. Well, they're all in a row, right? Which project are we referring to? The subject, the subject Ann Arbor are we Trail. To? 
Yeah. The one on that Arab the Trail. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh. There's no there's no dirt there. I think you're referring oh, to the okay. dirt they're mine across the street. So. Mm -hmm. We got All a right. question. A couple other questions, yes. Commissioner Stackhouse, and then I'll get to Commissioner. <clears throat> Go ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah, through the chair to the pet, uh, petitioner. Uh, I was uh, going over some of your uh, parking areas, mm -hmm. and uh, according to the uh, zoning ordinance, uh, requires two parking spaces for each dwelling. A uh, unit must have one space for each five dwelling units for guest mm -hmm. parking. Mm -hmm. Now, did you, could you clarify where the guest parking would be placed? Well, you have, again, you have the, the garage, the driveway, and I believe here we're going to put it, I believe there's eventually going to be parking in the, in the middle between the two buildings. And I think we only have, what, because six, I, six yeah, spaces? I didn't see it on the... Uh, on the plan. On the plan there. And do you have a space for the guests? Because it should be required, or it is required. Uh, basically, the site plan offhand is what we're proposing. So, uh, so I think the parking was eventually going to go probably in the middle, which probably is, I don't believe it's showing. I'm sorry, the plan. I can't hear you, sir. That's what we have driveways for, for the guest parking. So we have driveways for, again, you have the one car garage. That's why they have one car garage. These aren't like your typical, these aren't your typical units. You know, they're, they're more pretty much like ranch style homes. So you have, a, you have a garage, you have a driveway. Okay, so your the residence is going to use uh, the residence. The garage and driveway is, going to is what use we use. The driveway plus their guests will use the driveway. Is this what well, you're saying? Well, this isn't really a high density type. Of, this isn't a high density type user. So I mean, our experience has been we don't typically have a lot of. Yeah. Uh, this isn't um, like a single family residence where you have multiple people coming in. There's usually maybe two or three people and most living in these units. Yeah. With Excuse three me? bedrooms, you could possibly have three drivers. It's, uh, a, it's two there's two, I think there's I believe there's two units that have a third bedroom. To the administration, please. Yes. Yeah. Uh, does this fall, uh, fall in line with the uh, zoning for that area? Uh, so, as you mentioned, um, there is supposed to be one uh, guest parking space per five units. Um, alternatively, this is a PUD, so you can approve it with modifications or adjustments um, without going to the zoning board. Um, there is no room um, to add uh, guest parking here. Um, if there was a requirement uh, or recommendation to add parking, it would go into the open space um, area that's between these two buildings. Um, I had advocated for open space uh, at one point uh, during the initial phases of this plan, the petitioner wanted to build one building uh, that connected all six units uh, without this open space uh, area uh, in the middle here. And I advocated for two split buildings that are more aesthetically pleasing with open space for the residents, um, which <coughs> does not provide space for guest parking. Um, there is nowhere uh, else for guests to park. It's not like they're going to park and take up space on Ann Arbor Trail. Um, guests arriving here are simply <coughs> going to have space or they're not going to come. Um, so it's not like no guest parking is going to create any negative impacts uh, on the city or the adjacent roadway itself. Um, practically speaking, they might end up parking um, in these cutouts for emergency services, um, but that is the only other area that could probably fit that. that that's my um, opinion uh, and thoughts on how this site plan evolved. It's against law to park in emergency spots, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Uh, what's the uh, what's the motion from the the commission? What's the thoughts? Well, we don't have them, well, Commissioner Drain. One space for every it, five dwelling. It's my opinion guest that parking. You can say There's that they're not going to have visitors, but they are going to have visitors. I don't care who they are; people are going to have visitors. <clears throat> They're going to have a birthday. They're going to have something, and you're going to need additional parking. Mm. 
Maybe you should just go with five units and do more parking rather than go with six units and no parking. That's my opinion. I won't approve this like this without parking for residents. Mo, did you say it's, it's one space per five units? Yes. That's what the for ordinance guess, calls for. For guest parking. Yeah. Okay, so we're That's sort of about really like what? One and a, one and a quarter space? Two. We round Roughly up. two? Yep. So we have six units? Yep. But, I'm saying that that's not enough. I don't care, the ordinance may call for that, but I'm saying you're gonna need more parking than one space for three units. This is why it was designed with garages and driveways for that same reason, so. And People aren't gonna park in the driveways. People aren't going to park in the driveways. They're going to they're, they're going to want to park along Ann Arbor Trail. They're going to want to park in the in the uh, area where people are trying to get through. They're not going to park in the driveways because they don't want to be blocked in. They want to be able to leave. You need to pl uh, provide more parking for guests. I had the same thing with uh, another condo unit that wanted to go in that wasn't going to provide parking for guest. Well, lo and behold, they, they supplied parking for guests, and they're happy they did. And I think you need to supply parking for <coughs> guests. You gotta figure, people have friends. You're, you're telling me none of these people, all you, you're, gonna, you're gonna sell to people with no friends. One of the conditions you're gonna sell it to them that they don't have any friends that are gonna come over and visit. You can't do that. This is, uh, to a certain degree, this is no different than any other single, you know, we have Park West down the street, which is, in, there's 80 homes in there, they're single family homes. The biggest complaint people have there, because these are single family homes, everybody parks on the street. But these are single family homes where you have up to six, seven, eight people living there, to, to your point, there are people that do have get-togethers, but these are single family homes. These are condominiums. These are a little less this, it's different. Uh, same so, difference. So if you're still going to have friends that's that's gonna come that, over. They're still going to have friends that are going to come yeah. over. They're still going to have mm -hmm. birthday parties, mm -hmm. Christmas parties, Easter. They're, they're going to have friends come over. Unfortunately, we, did, we brought the best plan forward. We, we went back uh, and forth I several think, times. I think you've got to revisit your plan and go with five units instead of six and have more more parking for um unfortunately sir five you we're already at eight units we brought it down to six so five units kills the project so well then then we kill the project i vote no go ahead yeah mo what is the requirements as what is required by the parking uh so if we were to um require what's required by the ordinance it would be two additional Two additional spaces. spots. Yes, which could go um, in the open space area. Um, it's possible. I don't know for certain. It could go in in other areas, um, but we would need to design that. I, I'm not. I'm not sure. It could potentially go in this area over here. Uh, maybe one over here. Maybe one over here. I'm What's not, in I'm this not. area down here in the bottom along? Where is that a retention pond down there? Yes. What's alongside the re retention pond? Uh, this, is, this is a drop-off area, I believe. Ooh, on the other side, over uh, here. Over here? Yeah, what's over there? Um, this is just a call out, Not, nothing um, specific. This is just some um, language here. Couldn't they, couldn't they put parking there? Uh, it, w it would be difficult to get to it. Uh, that's open space area that. I mean, couldn't they move that retention pond back? all the way back further and use that central drive and put parking back there? So you're proposing putting parking, up the backyard is a parking lot, so people in their backyards are out there looking at cars versus on the sides. No, I'm saying you got a backyard back there, but moving that retention pond back further, <clears throat> maybe changing the shape of it, whether, I don't know how much the requirements are on how big a retention pond you have, but you got a lot of room in that corner back there that's not being used. Mm -hmm. you move that retention pond back and put a mm -hmm. small parking lot back there where that retention, right where that retention pond is. Have you been back to the property, make, sir? Have, have huh? you walked the property? Have you been back to the property? 
Have you walked the property here? No. Okay, there's a large drop off there. Would be it wouldn't be feasible to put parking back. This is why we had to design it like this because it drops how, back how, off to the how park. How big of a drop off is it? Several feet. You wouldn't be able to do it. It's also a flood zone. And, and it's a, yeah, believe it, correct. It why goes can't into you the put the, Why can't you put the retention pond in that drop off? That's where it's located, sir. But again, there's a steep drop off there, and there's also a floodplain bed that goes into Heinz Park. So, so that wouldn't, wouldn't and the Rouge River's behind there. So it wouldn't. It's not feasible. I mean, it's a confined. I, I, I see what you're saying, but it's a confined site. So to look at what we tried doing with this, it's it's a one acre site. So this is this is the. I mean, to come up with this, this is a very challenged site. So we came up with the best plan possible to to, to accommodate this. Well, I wish you luck. And I hope it, I hope it works out the way you think it's going to work out. Can I say something else? As I'm listening to everybody, that if they talk about parking, you, you've got to get permission okay. from the chair first. Yeah, yes. If you want to speak again on parking, please come up to the podium. And then I'll, yeah. Because we live in the condos that butt up to this complex. If they talk about additional parking, that they not put it on the east side because that's her backyard, and we don't want to look at a parking lot. Right, and that corner. we don't want a fence either. We don't want a brick wall either because right. we want the trees and the grass. Yeah. So as you're as you're talking about it, so I thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Comments from the commission. Commissioner Rappaport. I do. Um, so I have some questions and some commentary. Uh, the first, I guess, goes to the uh, goes to the administration. The, uh, the lot that we're looking at here, uh, it's very oddly shaped. Uh, is yes. there a history with this lot where it hasn't been uh, where it hasn't been able to be developed previously? Um, I've only been uh, with the city for three years. During my time, um, there has been no development proposed at the site. There's a dilapidated single family home. Uh, and in, in addition to the irregularity of the, of the site, um, there is the r r portion of the rouge that runs over here. You can kind of see it under the trees, uh, which results in that drop off that the uh, property owner was talking about in this area over here. Okay, and just for clarification's sake, uh, I see that the, uh, that the proposal uh, thank you, uh, Commissioner Stashow. Uh, I see that the proposal uh, would require the approval of, uh, of a, uh, a zoning variance. Uh, what is the feasibility of adding to dedicated uh, parking places as the, uh, as the, as the, the current uh, zoning ordinance requires? What's the feasibility of that? And I guess that could be answered by, by both the administration and the developer. Uh, so um, it, it would not require a variance since it's a PUD, so it could, it could be approved if the Planning Commission and City Council wanted to um, the way it's presented. Um, I think having guest parking spaces is obviously a good idea. Um, where it would be located on the site um, is is a more challenging um, way to find it. I, the open, I keep going back to the open space area and then um, would the commission rather see one um, long building and t instead of two um, shorter buildings? Uh, and if that was to happen, maybe the applicant would be able to uh, install a couple parking spaces in this area and maybe one or two on this area. Um, if we kept the two building um, design, the only other area to put parking would be in this open space and would these units want parking next to them? Maybe, um, maybe not, not a big deal, um, but that would be probably the only other space to put it. Okay, uh, what I'm hearing from the, uh, what I'm hearing from the panel, uh, aside from uh, from the the concerns that are pretty obvious, is that uh, <clears throat> we want to make sure that that your customers uh, don't end up regretting that they uh, that they that they don't have uh, I guess a, a resource for uh, for when they want company to uh, to visit them, 
and it's it may or it may not be uh, <clears throat> our place to actually make those uh, those determinations. Yeah. Uh, but th I think mm -hmm. what I'm actually hearing is that we don't feel very comfortable with uh, this being determined as a PUD. We'd actually like uh, like it to be heard specifically. And it, I, I'm, I really honestly don't want to speak for Sam, but uh, I think if, if this were to be, uh, to be adjudicated officially, it should actually appear before the, uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals and go through those, uh, go through the, the, the analysis that, that we actually apply on that, on that panel. Um, and if, if I were to make a recommendation to move this forward and you wanted to proceed without adding the, uh, the minimum uh, to under our uh, under our code, uh, I would like that to be the process as opposed to this going forward as a PUD with respect specifically to that issue. I'm not exactly certain how to word that, but probably less wordy than I just did. <laughs> So this property was rezoned to PUD, um, and this is being presented as a PUD development. Uh, I, I'm not I'm not certain if the zoning board um, can approve any variances um, <clears throat> as part of a PUD development plan. I'm not saying yes, and I'm not saying no. I just would have to look into <clears throat> into it. And we'll now this is a too. this is a question yeah. maybe better directed towards uh, towards Brandon, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it's never happened in my experience on the uh, on the uh, the ZBA. Mm -hmm. Can the ZBA make a uh, an advisory ruling? Um, so traditionally, the the zoning board of appeals or jurisdiction is set forth in the zoning enabling act and as part of the. Uh, grant of authority given to them in the in the zoning ordinance. Um, you know, traditionally, what you see is that the zoning board is engaged to uh, vary the the terms of the zoning ordinance. Uh, in this case, the planned unit development uh, does not require a a variance of any type because it's a flexible uh, land use process. Uh, possibly, you know, with the policy behind such a flexible process of maybe incentivizing difficult to develop properties without having to go through the extra step of a zoning board of appeals type process. But if the, if the current zoning is PUD, um, I, I'm not exactly sure what you're suggesting would, would have to happen in order to make it so that it would have to go to the zoning board of appeals. I'm not sure that's possible. Thank you very much for your opinion. It's good to have you at the meeting. <laughs> Uh, I have nothing further unless a uh, motion is required. I do have a question. Um, yes, sir. Where does Ann Arbor Trail actually sit, but up to sure. this property? Uh, it's uh, it's the gray, grayed out area. area. So what's this between like those bushes and uh, the tree line where the driveway is uh, and Ann Arbor Trail? Uh, this between here and here? Yes, that's the sidewalk. Area? Sure. Yeah, there's a there's a sidewalk area, um, some some curbing area, probably some of the uh, Ann Arbor Trail uh, roadway as well. Uh, probably the easement, grass planted area on the city side as well. Now, is it required to have that green yes. space there? Uh, the landscaping area there uh, with the trees. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, it is a. Um, should have went through the fire department. We are requiring it. The city council mm -hmm. also asked for it. Um, mm -hmm. So yes, it, it is required. To road uh, access roads like this are required to be screened from in our, from roadways. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to find two parking spots for you. <laughs> Sorry. There you go. Mr. Eagle, I got a question for you. Does this plan go through the fire department? Uh, it does go through the fire department. Uh, Has it gone through the fire department at this point? Yes. Yes. Okay. Both this plan and the preliminary plan. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And the zoning requires two parking spaces. Uh, mm -hmm. The zoning ordinance requires uh, two guest parking spaces. Yes. And we have none. And we have zero. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know. I don't know how you can approve it when it goes against your own zoning. If, if I may, I just want to I just want to clarify. I think Mo's already touched on this, but but being that this is a planned unit development, uh, it is sort of already contemplated within the zoning ordinance uh, that there's flexibility in the process. So. Um, I, I guess I'm just I just want to I just want to clarify that the flexibility is already baked into uh, the planned unit development process mm -hmm. so in a way the zoning ordinance does mm -hmm. already contemplate the fact that there could be deviations from what would normally be sort of the standard you have something you wish to add sir I, may, uh, I think the question was raised as far as your concern with the future residents is that they're going to have when they, buy, when they buy into the development, there's going to be master deed bylaws where it's going to show the site plan. They're going to whatever, you know, there'll be restrictions on if you want to, but the master deed will allow for the site plan, which they'll clearly see that they're not going to have it. It's a one way in, one way out development. On street parking is pr prohibited. So it's not like there's anything that's going to be disclosed to the buyer. The buyer will be have fully aware of this. They'll fully have the state nine day rescission period to review their master deed and bylaws. So it's nothing that they wouldn't see prior to buying, purchasing a unit. So, and, and part of the questions come from here is is for you. When you build this, you're hoping to utilize the sale of them. Uh, yeah, we're, we're fully aware of that, sir. Yeah, I mean, but what I was but referencing if, earlier if, is if people look at it and say, well. There's no place to park. You might lose. But th this tell. isn't. This is a very. This is kind of a boutique development. So when people purchase into this, they don't have. Typically, they have one vehicle. You know, you don't have three vehicles in you. I know there was a question as far as having a three-bedroom unit, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. other units where you built these, people use that as a secondary office, or if they have mm -hmm. like your grandkids. These are like downscale units. People are moving into out of their houses. You know, for less maintenance, mm -hmm. they don't want three, two or three vehicles. Mm -hmm. This is the purpose of why we kind of gravitated the last several years to this type of product. Um, and touch on one point, if you go into like single family development, if you had, and I know the PUD allows for flexibility, but you know, we have PUD developments where we have single family homes. Mm -hmm. If we, this was a major concern, our 80 unit development down the street would probably be, you know, 40 units or 50 units because we'd be so concerned with where all these people are gonna park when you have 80 units and you have, you know, you know, multiple people living in a unit and you have, <clears throat> you know, weekends, you have parties and everything else, that, that that's where you, should be more restrictive than something like this, in my opinion. Well, those those complexes take apart on the street, but right here <laughs> you really don't have a place to park. You'd be you'd be surprised of how many times we get concerns with parking because you get you know people have parties and especially in the summertime it's like even though it's an eighty unit development there's 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 always going to be parking issues no matter where you go. So, um, but this isn't this isn't that type of product. These are for people who have. You know, two via one vehicle, possibly two vehicles. You know, they're empty nesters, downsizing, and there's just usually two people living in a residence. So, can yeah, Commissioner Rappaport. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm. I'm sorry. I know I already ceded the floor. I had one random thought that I wanted to bring up. Uh, we are talking about uh, the zoning ordinance, and mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. I'm sure uh, mm -hmm. Ken's mm -hmm. obviously aware, and most of the board's probably aware, we are currently. Uh, in the process of revising and renewing our uh, zoning uh, ordinance. And parking mm. is an issue that we have yet to, uh, to discuss in the steering committee. Uh, I don't know if there's been, and I, I certainly don't know if you can talk about it, uh, administration. However, I don't know if there's been some preliminary discussion about the direction that we're going to be, uh, to be pushing. Uh, and if if this and if our conversation here is interesting, but potentially moot, uh, if this were to be brought, for example, next year, uh, do you have any do you have anything you can offer us? Um, just generalities in in broad terms, nothing specific to this development or other developments. And, I, and I'm sorry to cut you off. And the reason I bring it up is because it occurred to me that when we were when we were at the the mm -hmm. meeting just a week ago, mm -hmm. uh, this sort of interaction is mm -hmm. exactly what he was talking about when mm -hmm. when Correct. the parking issue did come up. Mm -hmm. Correct. So, our zoning ordinance requires. Um, Way more parking than is is needed. I mean, we could see that all over the city. Um, that doesn't mean there shouldn't be guest parking here. I'm just saying that if we do make some modifications to our parking requirements in the zoning ordinance, that they will be 
proposed as um, lesser than the existing uh, minimum requirements. Um, so a, a development that may have required 10 could have could require six or, or eight today, uh, or I'm sorry, in, in the future. Um, a lot of cities are going away from minimum parking requirements and letting the private sector figure it out, um, which is what I would um, advocate for. Um, and there's other cities that are implementing maximum requirements where you can only have 10 and you can't have any more than that, which reduces impervious surface and flooding issues and other things like that. Again, I'm not advocating for anything as it relates to this project, just telling you uh, in the planning world what we're discussing and in broad terms what we're discussing for the zoning ordinance update. Any other questions? Any other questions? Motion's in order. I'll offer that motion. Very good, sir. Uh, at this time, regarding uh, case number 135, sorry, 1315A, proposed site plan approval, conversion of vacant church into a We're in the very first case. I'm sorry. 2255A. Uh, five. two, two, five, five, Correct. Thank you very much. It is a public hearing, but... Uh, this is a public hearing. Yes, it is. Uh, I'd like to move to close the public hearing, waive the normal rules, and refer case number 2255A to the City Council without a recommendation for either approval or disapproval uh, with direction to resolve the, uh, the parking issue prior to any approval. Support. Mm -hmm. Roll call. To our attorney, before we have roll call, is that, can we legally do that, send it without a recommendation? I know we can deny it or approve it. Can we forward it without anything? Yes. It, 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 the, the Zoning Enabling Act requires that you submit your findings uh, to the city council, to the public body, so. Okay. So long as those findings are submitted, it shouldn't be a problem. very often. We do it this time. Okay, so the motion is to send it without recommendations on either direction. Roll call, please. Uh, roll call vote to provide no recommendation um, for case number 2255A, uh, but also note uh, that the Planning Commission finds a potential guest parking issue. Uh, roll call vote. Uh, Durante? Uh, clarification. That's a, <clears throat> a recommendation not to support or disapprove, <clears throat> but forward it to no. the city council, right? That was the motion. Yes. Okay. That was okay. the motion. That's already been made. That was the motion. Okay. Yeah. Support. Okay. Uh, Durante? Support. Uh, Rappaport? Yes. Richards? Yes. Sharp? Yes. Spizak? Yes. Stachow? Yes. Hornbuckle? Yes. Okay. Motion Sir, carries. Good luck to you as you go to City Council. Right. And maybe Hopefully there is a solution. Some, maybe you can come up with some parking for the City Council before you get there. Because I'm sure they're going to ask for it. Okay. Try to. Try to. Come up with some ideas. It's a it's a challenging site as we. I, I I understand that, and I, I really want to see it develop, but I but I still think you're going to need some. All right, we need point. to move forward. You'll be able Thanks to do again. that at City Council. <clears throat> the next item on there is the uh, consideration of approval for the uh, annual report. So moved. Support. Support. The motion is to uh, accept the report by Commissioner Rappaport and uh, seconded by Commissioner Richards. Roll call, please. Uh, Big okay. yes. Roll call vote to approve the 2021 Planning Commission Annual Report, uh, graciously prepared by uh, Planning Secretary Nicole Jones. Durante? Yes. Rappaport? Yes. Richards? Yes. Sharp? Yes. Spizak? Aye. Stachow? Yes. Hornbuckle? Yes. Big Mark approved it. 
Next item on the agenda is the election of officers. The uh, first position will be for chair. Nominate Ken Sharp. Support. Move Make nomination. a motion we close, close nomination and elect Sharp <laughs> unanimously. We got a motion uh, <laughs> by Commissioner Rappaport to nominate Ken Sharp, uh, supported by Commissioner Spizak. Motion by Commissioner Draney to close the nominations. Is there support for that? Support. Support. Support by Commissioner Richards. Yes. So, Mr. Sharp will be maintained as chairman. We didn't vote on it yet. Hi. Would you like to vote for nobody? Would you like to call for a vote, sir? No. Okay, just checking. <laughs> Uh, the next position is for vice chairman. Sure. Okay. Am I going to have to do all I can't that? nominate yeah. myself. I make a motion as we appoint Spizak as vice chair. Support. <laughs> Support. I close the nominations. <laughs> okay. I support that as well. <laughs> Commissioner Draney made a motion to. Uh, to retain uh, Commissioner Spizak as vice chairman, and that was supported by Richards. Commissioner Richards, and a motion to close nominations. Was that by Commissioner Draney also? Oh, yeah, big mouth. <laughs> was there support for that? Support. Support by uh, Commissioner uh, Stackhouse. All in favor? Aye. 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 How come we didn't ask for all the paper for you? Well, I was, I was afraid. <laughs> I, I, I forgot. I know. The uh, next position is for the position of secretary, which is our bylaws calls for a secretary for the commanding the planning commission, which is different than our lovely secretary over there. So, <laughs> Nominate uh, Ruby Richards. No. I, I was going to nominate you. No, we nominate each other. And then we can sort it out. Because <laughs> you're the secretary now, aren't you? So I'm nominating. Uh, are you Assistant, nominating? Yeah. Yes, I'm Stackhouse. nominating. Nominated uh, Deanna Adams the, uh, Su Support and move to close the nomination. <laughs> All right. Motion by she Commissioner Richards to, uh, to nominate uh, uh, Commissioner Stackhouse, supported by Commissioner Spizak. Motion by Commissioner Spizak to close the nominations. There's their support. Support. Support by Commissioner Richard. <laughs> <laughs> I should just let the two of you talk. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Oh. Mr. Ayu, do you have anything else you wish to talk about? Uh, I do not. Thank you. We will definitely be having an April meeting. All right. Uh, motion is in order to adjourn. Pro move. Or motion by Commissioner Spizak to adjourn, uh, supported by Commissioner Hornbuckle. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you. You make my job easy. <laughs>